Good morning. My name is Paige Newman. I am an assistant archivist for collections processing at the Virginia Museum of History and Culture. And I want to thank Library of Virginia for one, inviting me to hang out for the Transcribathon on our fifth anniversary, and our fifth anniversary. Now it's our fifth anniversary, right? <laughs> but also, I want to thank them for starting to host our records from Unknown No Longer, which is um, the slave name database started in 2011 from Virginia Historical Society collections which are now housed at the Virginia Museum of History and Culture. So just to start out, um, I don't know how many of you have come to see us at the Virginia Museum of History and Culture. You might have seen us in the news in June. We hosted the dedication of Arthur Ashe Boulevard and we are located at the corner of Arthur Ashe Boulevard and Kensington with our neighbor on Kensington, I mean, on Grove and North Arthur Ashe Boulevard, the Virginia Museum of Fine Arts. So to get started, I've pulled up our website. Just to give you an idea, you can find us at www.virginiahistory.org. And just to let you know that, as I mentioned, the Virginia Historical Society's collections are housed within the Virginia Museum of History and Culture. We are a nonprofit that was founded in 1831. In addition to manuscripts, we also collect art, books, historical objects, maps, and photographs. So we're more than just, we've got a lot of history, a lot of stuff in that building. <laughs> so if you get to our website, and just to give you a background where Unknown No Longer sort of came from, we printed a guide from a grant through the National Endowment of Humanities in 1995. It's our guide to African-American manuscripts. And I'm just gonna go here. So when you do visit us online, this is how you get there. So you can do, um, let's see, to make it easy. Whoops, you can actually type correctly. That would be helpful. Gee. Oh my gosh. Uh -huh. There we go. Click into that, and that kind of gives you an overview of what we have. And you can scroll down a little bit, and we have it organized by last name, and also how to use the guide. And then we have a PDF, PDF version, which either can be printed out. We, um, in addition to doing this, we updated the guide in 2002, and since from now on, it's out of print. So anything, when we update the manuscripts for the African American Guide, we, it's online, and it, we just put it on there. So you can find any updated information through um, African American history to genealogical information that is being discovered in our collections here on this site. From here, this is how in 2011, with a grant from Dominion, which also helped Library of Virginia with Virginia Untold, this is how we got to Unknown No Longer and getting to the manuscripts that we started digitizing. And from there, it's already up, but I kind of want to go through our collection, I mean, um, excuse me, our website, and click. So in 2011, we started digitizing the documents referenced in our guide to African American manuscripts and make them accessible to the public in a way that hadn't been possible before for us. I mean, the records are available, but they weren't very accessible. So within these documents are numerous accounts that collectively help tell the stories of African Americans who have lived in Virginia over the centuries. Now the Guide to African American Manuscripts is only available on our website, and as it's updated and we process the records, as I mentioned, through um, the Guide for African Ameri American Manuscripts, but also through Unknown No Longer, which if you click, it'll take you, and there's a little blurb about that, take you to Virginia Memory, you search the narrative. 
So UNL, our records, we're, we're Library of Virginia and Virginia Museum of History and Culture, we share similar records. Virginia Museum of History and Culture, we are a personal papers repository, so our focus is on family papers for the manuscripts in the library. And that can include, it will be, doesn't include published sources that we have in our library, nor does it include unpublished sources from other repositories. This is a focus on our manuscripts and what we have. And currently we've just really had the tip of the iceberg. We, I think, once we transferred names over beginning of this year, we have a little over 12,500 names, which in the scheme of things is, you know, the history, that's so, so very little. So we have a lot more work to do. The database was created so to lift from obscurity of unpublished historical records as much bibliographical detail as remains of enslaved Virginians named in these records. In some cases, it might be one name on a list, and others more details survive, such as family relationships, age, location, say the city or county state that the plantation that enslaved lived, or if they were purchased or sold, where they went to. Also, how much an enslaved person was valued for or sold for, and if we're lucky, physical descriptions about the person. The types of records, some are similar to what the Library of Virginia has in Virginia memory, but we focus also on accounts, appraisals, Bible records, broadsides, deeds, diaries, insurance policies, estate inventories, letters, memoirs, newspaper clippings, petitions and wills, and there's a bunch more, but that's just to mention a few. And as mentioned before and here, you can see at the beginning of the year, um, the content was moved and it's now hosted. So as we update Unknown No Longer Records, they will be available here. And anything that you see, and we'll, I'll go in and I'll just share one connected story. There's a lot of connected stories, and unfortunately I wish we, I had more to share, but I'll just share one at the moment. Most of the items you see, you're welcome to come to our library and see them in person and hold them and read them for yourselves. So one that when we first, I guess we were, I don't know if we've gone live yet, but I had emailed, there's one person Peter Spain, I'm going to bring up, when we transcribed, or not, excuse me, not transcribed, when we digitized his will, he was a free, um, a free black man living in Richmond. And the fact that I hadn't seen a record like that before, I'm hoping we have a lot more in our collections. When I was brought into UNL, it was right when we were starting to roll it out, and I was one of the only archivists working with our manuscripts, so I was in there trying to figure out what should be digitized, what needed to be transcribed, and that. So I'm going to put in Peter Spain. Oops, again. And you'll see some other records come up. But just go with me, believe me here, that these bottom two are the ones that I'm <laughs> talking about. Because <laughs> if you'll notice, if you're searching in here, um, it'll pull up records from either Peter, Spain, but to get the combo, just gotta work through. So the will I'm talking about is 1840. Come up. There we go. I, Peter Spain, a free man of color of the city of Richmond. He's making his last will and testament. 1840. So, again, that I hadn't really seen that. What really got to me is, if we go here secondly, after the payment of my debts and funeral expenses, there we go, I hereby um, emancipate and set free forever my, he marks out wife, and he puts friend, but he leaves it blank, who though my slave at this time, I have for many years considered as my wife. So I, it, that stopped me in my tracks when we found this in the collection. Because at this time, you know, it was against the law for enslaved free persons of color to be legally married. And scroll down, he again mentions her. 
and using, not using her name. He also has two sisters, Biddy Spain and Hester, who are free women of color living in Petersburg. And in addition, there's a young boy, free boy of color living with him and his wife, John Fenney. So that, to me, was unusual. So we probably, did, this is one of the first, in 2011 when we first digitized this, and I was always curious what happened to Peter Spain. I wasn't quite sure. We didn't have anything else in our collection that I could find relating to Peter Spain. So when combined records went to check again, well, another Peter Spain pops up in Virginia and told through the Library of Virginia's records. And this is mentioning him 63 in the Free Negro Register. And it gives the black man about 63 years of age, five feet nine. So it gives him a description, but it also lets us know that he was emancipated in 1811. So that is just one, one connection. So by combining our records, unknown no longer, and Virginia Untold, it's just one of the many, many examples we hope to connect so we can provide more information and access for African American genealogy. And I know we're getting close to lunch, so I don't want to take up too much time. I also would like to mention, go back to our website. We have an exhibit. If you go scroll down. There we go. Love for y'all to come see it. It's determined. And it's a 400 year struggle for black equality. It's a good exhibit. It, you, it can take as little or as long as you'd like to, but there's a lot of good information. And it's up till March of um, March 29, 2020. So that was just a quick overview of what we have um, Unknown No Longer Records, which we just released new records for what, yesterday? So there's a lot more records to be transcribed for Unknown No Longer in addition to the new records that um, Sonia talked about early this morning. So does anyone have any questions? <coughs> I answered them all. <laughs> any questions beyond or just about U UNL or Junior Museum of History and Culture? If so, feel free to come up. I'll be here till the end of the day. Great. Great. Thank you all. <laughs>